The day we came, a whole group of writers, to look at the, the collection and choose something that we wanted to write about, that was very difficult. Everything was so interesting. But then I saw the suit laid out on a table and it looked so strange. Beautifully made, obviously, in a really handsome brown fabric, but, but it was so thick. The fabric was just so thick. And so I was very curious to know what the suit was for and why it had been made. And then when I learned that it had been made and shut away in a box on the cold Snares Islands for so many years and then brought home never used, shut away in case someone was shipwrecked and found it and then it fitted them and kept them warm. I thought this was just such a strange story. Then I saw the hat, the opera singer's hat, up on a shelf next, quite near the suit, and that had only been worn once for this grand occasion, and then given to the museum, or on loan I think it is, but once again something absolutely interesting shut away. And these two items seemed to me to go together, one so feminine and the suit so masculine, I thought they've just got to have a story together. And in a way it's turned into a little romance. The flyaway hat. In the dim quiet of the collection shelves, the blue hat wanted to sing. She glanced at the lace bonnet on her left. Don't you dare, muttered the bonnet. Your attitude shocking, the captain's hat growled. Who let you in anyway, grumbled the black top hat on another shelf. The blue hat sighed, and that in itself made a musical note. On all the shelves, tissue paper rustled with disapproval, and hat brims creaked. But laid on a workbench across the aisle, a three-piece suit looked strangely interested. The blue hat had seen him before. He was very robust. She risked another note, no more than a hum. The hat with orange buttons scolded at once. No sound at all. We must simply sit and remember. Remember what? asked the blue hat. You must all have amazing stories. Why won't you tell me? The bonnet sniffed. Shameless show-off. You just want an excuse to tell yours. The hat longed to burst out in a high sea of outrage. She'd been created to be a show-off. How could an opera singer's hat be anything else? Her spangle, a blue diamond, was made to be seen and admired. Her ribbons and coils, blue as the sky, had trembled with music. The audience had loved her. The hat quivers like a bird, they had exclaimed, as if it would fly off, soar up and away. If only I could sing again, the hat sighed, sing till I really did fly. For that you need an audience, said the captain's hat, and it won't be me. The hat could have wept. The other hats had been in plenty of adventures. All she'd had was one glorious concert. She sighed again. Ahem, came a somewhat woolly voice. Madam, with the musical bent, are you in trouble? Don't encourage her, shrieked the lace bonnet. But, spread out as he was, the suit made an excellent audience, the last the blue hat might ever see. So she jolly well started to sing as loud as she could. Her ribbons quivered, melody throbbed in the air. Soon I'll be sealed away again here on my shelf, she sang, and never, I never will fly. Beautiful, rumbled the suit, and so sad, so like my own story. Then tell me, she sang, tell me your tale. And so he began. His saga was terrible and dark. He had been shut away since the day he was made. The woolly fabric and striped lining, jacket with its handsome collar, waistcoat with five stout buttons, sturdy trousers, all folded away in a cramped tin box. Not worn even once? The blue hat trembled. No, madam, the sad suit said. I was packed with emergency supplies on a cold, distant island in case of a shipwreck. I longed to stretch and run about. I even, ahem, <clears throat> don't laugh, wished I could dance. But all you could do was wait, whispered the hat. I listened, said the suit, to the jangle of seabirds outside, to the roar of surf and the battle of wind in the forest. It made a strange music of its own. Penguins scuffled past each spring. Shearwaters dug nests. I heard their chicks tumble and squeak. 
Then at last, he continued, I heard a voice. Oh, joy, a shipwrecked somebody. Were my buttons as stout as thirty years ago? Was my fabric as warm? Would it be a child who had to roll the trouser cuffs up to make me fit? Would I run at last? Would I dance? The box opened. A man looked in and jammed the lid shut. I felt the rocking of a dinghy. Pirates, I cried. Brigands, this was not what I was made for. A tale of terror said the blue hat. The suit's voice deepened. It grew worse. They brought me here to the museum. Jacket, waistcoat and trousers, I was slammed into the darkness of a drawer. No drumming of wind through the trees. No thrashing of waves on the coast. Not even the purr of a penguin. No music, dear lady, at all, till today when I heard your song. Don't egg her on, the brown bowler muttered. A three-piece suit should know better, scoffed the green felt cap. The two of them should leave, shouted the captain's hat. They don't belong. In the blue hat's opinion, she certainly didn't. She hummed higher and higher till she felt herself float off the shelf. Scraps of tissue drifted behind her like confetti. The suit hummed his own deep note and rose from the workbench. Amid the grouching of the other hats, somehow the blue hat and suit eased down the aisle to the collection room door, along the corridor, down the stairs and outside into the midday sun. Behind them lay the museum like an enormous hat box. In front, a street teemed with cars. Over the beat of the traffic, birds called in the wind, and there the hat saw a hill. Houses filled its lower slopes, but trees beyond reached to the sky. Come on, she sang. The suit floated with her through the lunchtime crowd. Everyone was too busy to notice a flyaway hat and runaway suit, or else they must have imagined it was dust blown in the eyes by the lively wind. Up they climbed, hat and suit under the bluest sky, till they reached the trees. The hat soared to the branch of Anayo and joined a chorus of tui, wood pigeons and numberless others. The suit danced hurrah till his trousers were weary, spread the arms of his jacket and sprawled on the grass. Beetles scrambled at once over his waistcoat to compare themselves with the five brown buttons. Happy, sighed the hat, so very happy. The last scrap of tissue drifted away. In the reflections of the eyes of a hundred birds, she saw her diamond shine and the ribbons flutter.